One of the things I've really needed for a long time, even before I moved to New Zealand, was a saw till. Right now, my saws sit on top of my toolbox, and that's not really a, a good way to use my toolbox. If you do a Google search, what you end up seeing are ones that are pretty much like this, two drawers at the bottom. Pop the saw in and hang it on your wall. I don't own the house that we're in right now, so I don't really want to hang things on the wall. I had a bench that I saw at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, and it looks a lot like the Viking tool chest. I thought that's the perfect prototyping project. And this doesn't have to be a salt hill. It can be just a bench that you put stuff in. This is a picture of the bench that I saw at the Maritime Museum. I still model most things I build in SketchUp because I want to make sure that I'm not wasting wood as well as I'm not over buying wood. I can do the math and get the angle. You can use Google searches to get the angle. I'm going to just lay it out full scale. What I need to do is get the height of my current saw bench, which is what I want this to match, which is 17 inches and 1 eighth. I'm going to scribe a line across the bottom, and I'm going to measure up 17 and 1 eighth inch. I use a cutoff board to represent the thickness of the lid, and that gives me my actual height of the side. Measure in one inch and draw a line from the bottom corner to that one inch. This is the angle that I will use throughout the rest of this project. I use a marking knife and a combination square to scribe all my lines to prevent tear out from the back of the saw. And I keep going through the process. I show the sideboards, make sure that you share the angle. And you're going to do that by flipping the board over, moving it up. And you can lay it on the next piece and scribe. Make sure you keep a piece of the cutoff if you have a shooting board. As you can see, I'll wedge it into my shooting board so that the side is back at 90 degrees. I then use a compass to scribe out the line that I will saw to to create the feet on the sides. So then make sure I go through and I mark out the one inch. Clamp the boards together and salt them down together and plane them together. I then use the long sides and place them on the short sides to roughly mark out where they will sit on those boards. I then use a marking gauge to scribe into the long sides and I use my marking knife to go across the grain and saw them out. The ledges need to have that same angle on them so I go back with a chisel and I make sure that I put that on them. Then I use a coping saw and a spoke shave to clean up the arches. I didn't really worry about them too much because they're not going to be seen. For the side dados that the bottom will sit in, you pretty much just need to scribe one side of it. Here I scribe the bottom side. And you use a chisel to tap into that line and clean it out. Use that same piece of waste that I had before, butt it up against the edge that I just created, rock it over and use my marking knife to mark the top edge. I then repeat the same process. This will leave you with a crowned center, which you can clean out with a chisel, or as I do with a router plane, but you can do a search for poor man's router and make one like that with just the chisels that you do have. This will go a lot more smoothly when the tools are sharp. But it is not hard and it goes much more quickly than you think it would. You're going to tap that scrap piece of wood in there and make sure that you can support the whole side just by picking that up. 
for figuring out the length of the bottom piece, put the short side pieces where they would be on the long side pieces. And I mark the inside of the dado. That mark I then carry down onto the bottom board and cut them to length. Then I plane the end grain to that same angle. Then you take a break and you play with your pup. Measure the dado at the longest part of the dado and I cut the bottom board to that. Clean them up with a plane and test fit. And I take one of the leftover pieces, I cut it in half, and I clean it up with a shooting board. Go to the bottom piece again and I'm going to make two dados in it that will fit these two pieces. I then take the two pieces that I'm using as the kerfing boards and I plane the angle onto the two sides so that they will fit inside. I measured out five points, drilled holes, and I sawed down to those points from the top. You want to go with the grain here, you don't want to go perpendicular to the grain. And I tap the pieces in and make sure they're square. And I put in a saw, and I'm checking that saw to make sure that it's actually straight. I put in another saw, and another saw, and I keep making sure that it is straight. I glue on the short side pieces. I did clamp this up and let it sit. Then I came back and I marked out where the holes would be. There's three on every side. I did use a drill here to make my pilot holes, and I used nails. This is one important part here. Because of the cross grain issues at the ends, do not use screws, do not use glue, unless you're just gluing one inch of it. Then plane the edges that are left over to smooth it out. And then I went to the lid. Use a plane and you just slowly round over the edges and you'll get a perfect bull nose. You hit it up with sandpaper afterwards. This could have been done with two boards, but I'm using a different board because I didn't follow my SketchUp cutting list and therefore I ran out of wood. It's a shame on me. Made from real buttons. So I marked in three-fourths of an inch from the back edge. I then used a chisel and cleaned it up until the hinge fit in. For the hinge to actually sit flush, I needed to go back and recess a little bit deeper where the barrel is. I put the hinges onto the lid, I put the lid onto the carcass, and I mark out where those hinges are. I then go in and I clean out the other recess for the hinges. Take one of the hinges off and I use it to mark where the hole should be and pre-drill them. And I put the lid on. I finished this with a shellac. No wax because it will have raw timber on it. Because I'm using it with my saw bench, I don't want wax rubbing off onto things. I did finish it with the hardware on, which is usually a no-no, but uh, being this is a prototype and a utilitarian piece, I'm not that worried about it. And I eventually went over it and I sanded it.